Welcome back to Everlast YouTube channel. I'm Brian Legalio. Today we're going to look at the Everlast Cyclone 312. So we're back in my home shop. Um, I'm going to run some dual shield flux core on some quarter inch. We might get in some 38s later, maybe some um, pipe processes later. But reason I want to do some dual shield flux core is if you have a 200 amp machine, this is, happens to be a 300 amp machine, but if you have a 200 amp machine and you have a project that comes to you, dual shield is a great way to get more out of your machine and can increase your productivity. Uh, for example, every year I have a battle bot that comes in, a professional heavyweight battle bot. They you know, get launched across their rank. They're 250 pounds. They're made out of you know, some pretty cool steels, uh, like some AR, 400, 500, some stuff that uh, they need to make sure they have some good penetration. Short arc MIG welding is not the best process for that. Um, dual shield is what I, tend to go to. We got the Cyclone 312 out of the box. I'm gonna run some dual shield flux core. We got some quarter inch uh, A36 right here. We're gonna, we're gonna put in some generic settings that I like running on flux core, see how it reacts. And we're gonna go from there. These are generic settings I like with 045 wire, uh, 28 and 350. Um, in the flat and horizontal position, I usually drop it down a little bit, voltage and wire for out of position welds. But what I wanna do is these settings I know and I wanna, I wanna start from here and work. If it starts popping or anything, we're gonna adjust it. But this is the first time us ever running the machine. Let's see what it does. All right, so on a dual shield flux core, you run it like 718, you always have a drag angle. Um, when I'm looking at this at 28 and 349, um, it's plenty hot enough. I'm probably gonna have to readjust my settings because this is running extremely hot. Um, but good, like we have a lot in, uh, out in the gas tank, but it's a very capable machine. Let's see what, uh, I'm gonna try some 25 and 300 and see how it reacts. 25 and 300, way more control on it. Uh, you know, see how I have equal toe lengths. I'm a little concave, but on something like this, I do a multi-pass weld, a, you know, a, do a fill weld so I can counteract the concave nature. Uh, when it's concave like that, it's gonna be a little rough to take off the flux. Um, when it's convex, it's a lot easier to take off the flux, but it's running clean, no porosity, no worm porosity. Worm porosity and flux core, it's from being a little too close. Flux core, you have to hold like five eighths to three quarters of an inch stick out, depends on the manufacturer of the wire. I put a little side to side oscillation on it. I don't have to, I do that, so it's easier for me to follow a straighter line. Uh, to make it more convex, you could slow down a little bit on your travel speed. You could do kind of like a little circle back to backfill the backside of your puddle instead of staying on the leading edge the whole time. When I ran this bead right here, I was on the leading edge most of the time to try to get proper penetration. But if you took a little step back, it'd fill, backfill your puddle a little bit. So I, I know people are gonna say you, step, you can't step back on a flux score or weld. So you have your full crater that is exposed metal prior to your flux puddle, you can, you can adjust your position of wire to that puddle in particular where you're not back into the flux. Uh, I've been doing this for years. I've passed many a test with flux core, both pressure and structural. Um, yeah, it's easy to do. All right, guys, if you came across this video because you have problems or you're coming across problems with flux core, here's two common ones. Right here, we have some linear porosity. Linear porosity is, uh, it's caused gener generically from either two things. Shielding is the main culprit. Uh, it could be either not enough gas coverage. So, you know, that could be bad gas, not enough gas. You, you know, you have a clogging the system or it could be bad wire. This one right here is a case of bad wire. Dual shield flux core, the flux on it is just like the flux on 718. Uh, this right here, because we're in Florida, this probably absorbs some um, moisture and you know this is what it would cause linear porosity. You can't really see it while it's happening. Uh, the puddle is a little bit more, more reactive, um, but very common if you don't take care of your wire. This next one right here is wormhole porosity. This is a condition you almost only see in dual shield flux core. Um, you need to maintain a 5 eighths to 3 quarter inch stick out so you don't get wormhole porosity and it has to do with the flux activating at the proper distance. It needs a little bit of time. Um, so if you're running across some wormhole porosity, 
which looks like little worms were crawling around your weld. From your arc length, you need to extend your contact dip, tipped, contact tip, tip, to work. For it to work, yeah, of course. What do you think we're talking about? It's going to work if you extend your contact tip distance contact to your workpiece. To work. To work. It will work. If you extend it, it will work, yes. To work. To work, yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay. If you extend your contact tip to work distance. Uh, I'm Brian Legalio, Bingo Welding on Instagram and TikTok. The camera guy's just <laughs> nonstop messing. All right, remember, weld mean, weld green.